Um, this one is all about proton NMR, NMR. So it's to do with hydrogen environments, and in particular hydrogen 1 isotope, because it's not hydrogen 2, it's not even, it's odd, so therefore we can do NMR with it and look at the different spins. Um, let's look at a problem. Here's um, a lot of information, and I'm going to try and attempt to explain what all this information is about. Um, up here, you can see we have the spectrum. Um, this is a proton NR spectrum, and you can see you've got three peaks. That tells us that we've got three different areas where there's hydrogen, so three different environments where hydrogen is in. Um, next to those peaks, we've got a few numbers. These are the integration numbers. The integration numbers tell you how many hydrogens there are in that set environment. So it's a ratio of how many hydrogens there are in that environment. So obviously the ratio here is 1 to 2 to 3. So, um, yep, I'll explain that a bit later on as well. Um, under it, you've got your chemical shift, measured in ppm again. Um, and here and here, if you can see them, the light's in the way, um, we've got tables of chemical shifts and what they might mean in terms of the functional groups which they um, work with. What this question is going to be asking in, is, um, it says, what is the structure of this, given that we have, which possible structure is it here? So the first thing to look at is how many um, hydrogen areas there are in this. So in this first one, propanoic acid, what we can see, if I get a, we've got one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, and one hydrogen here. Each of those is a different hydrogen environment, and that means that they're acting in a different way. That means that there's no symmetry around these hydrogens here. In this um, example here, you've got a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. Now, this molecule here has only got two hydrogen environments. They're not the same, so what we'll see is two peaks. Um, our um, example here has three peaks, so therefore it can't be this molecule because it's only got two. This one has one, two, three hydrogen environments, so therefore it could be either um, propanoic acid or ethyl methanoate. Now we've got to look at the chemical shifts and see if this helps us at all. Um, chemical shifts basically tell you what's attached to the hydrogen, uh, where the hydrogen's at. Now, um, generally, general rule of thumb, the more, the higher the chemical shift, the more close it is to oxygen, the hydrogen's close to oxygen. Um, this one up here, oh, hang on, I should, before that, the ratios tell you how many hydrogens there are. So one to two to three means that there's one area which has one hydrogen, another area where it has two hydrogens, another area where it has three hydrogens. This is just a ratio, so it could be one to two to three, or it could be two to four to six. So if it was a bigger compound, um, if we had sym symmetry, what we'd see is we, would have, we could have one, two, three, two, four, six, and it goes up in that ratio. But as it stands, it's 1 to 2 to 3 because you can see here, in this region we have 1 hydrogen, this one we have 2, this one we have 3. So that's where you get the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. Now, chemical shift time. So we look at the chemical shifts, this one's around about 12. So we go and try and look and see where this chemical shift is coming from. Um, the chemical shift of about 12 corresponds to this here. Um, it says 11 to 12 here, which it is, and it says it's a carboxylic acid um, hydrogen group where you've got a C double OH bond. Now this tells you straight away that it has to be this molecule because you have your C double bond to O and C bond to OH here. And the highlighted group here, the highlighted H, tells you which hydrogen it's looking at. So because you have this one here, because it's an integral of 1, and it's at 11, we can tell that it's a hydrogen bonded straight to an oxygen there. Um, and even more so because that's the chemical shift that we have there. Um, moving down here with our 2 and our 3, um, 
the two hydrogen, basically it's in the range of about one up to three. So if we try and find the one up to three, it is um, the first one here is within this range. <clears throat> and because we have a three hydrogen integral, it tells us that we have three hydrogens there. So therefore, it's going to be a C and H3 there um, bonded to something else. The R group here just, rem just um, says it's bonded to something, a chain that's coming off there. The next one here, just above 2, um, is representative of this here, basically a 2 hydrogen bonded to a C du double bonded to O, and that fits with this as well. So if we look at this, this guy here says we have a O, C, O, H based on this chemical shift. This one says we have C, H, 2 bonded to C, double bonded to O from that one there. And this guy says we just have CH3 bonded to something coming off it. And it's an N group here. So what we do is we arrange these and work out what we have. So if I zoom in here and just... Oops, that's going to work, is it? Yep. All right, we have a C double bond to O bonded to OH. We have a CH2 bonded to C double bonded to O. And we have a CH3 what we do is we put all this together and we basically match it up so it fits. And what we get is this molecule here. Now that's all right, but it's basically, if you get a multiple choice question like this, it's not too bad because you're just um, kind of cancelling out what everything else is there. Moving along to something... All right, now I'm going to try and attempt to explain the difference between low and high res NMR. Low res is here, high res is here. See, the main difference is um, the detail that you have. Here you just have a single peak or a couple of different peaks. Here you have lines where the signal from here has been split into these four lines here. Now this splitting occurs because you get interference from the hydrogens next to the hydrogen that you're looking at here. Um, and the interference comes from these hydrogens, and depending on how many hydrogens you have, tells you how many, how much it splits. So the idea is it comes on from a formula called n plus one. Whereas if you have n number of hydrogens attached to it, you get n plus one splits. If you have zero hydrogens attached to the neighbouring um, atom you'll get one split, one signal. If you have one hydrogen attached to it, you'll get two splits, which is called a doublet. Singlet, doublet. And if you have two hydrogens attached, you'll get three, known as a triplet. And three hydrogens, four splits, so you get a quadruplet, and so on and so forth. Um, it's easiest just to show this in actual fact and how it's working, and we'll use this here as an example. All right, so from this, I'll just get a different color, I'll get blue, and say this here, okay, corresponds to this, sorry, corresponds to these hydrogens. Okay, we know that for two reasons. One, because the integrated number is three, so you've got a ratio of three hydrogens here, and you've got three hydrogens here. The second reason is because the chemical shift is just, just over one, so that means you've got um, hydrogens attached to an alkane structure, which means a carbon bonded to a carbon. Now, this signal has been split into three. So N plus one tells you that the carbon next to the one that we're looking at will have three hydrogens attached to it. Sorry, two hydrogens attached to it because it's got three lines. And you can see that that this hydrogen here, the one next to it, has got two. And that's the reason it's been broken into these three lines. Because we've got interference from these two hydrogens, causing the signal for this one to split into three. Getting our next um, colour, we use fuchsia. And we'll say this peak here comes from this hydrogen here. You know it comes from this hydrogen, first of all, because 
you got integrated is one, your relative area is one, and you got one hydrogen here, so it has to be the, that one. And secondly, because the chemical shift tells you that it has to be something bonded to an oxygen. The ones bonded to oxygen come between about one and five, so they could be anywhere there. The main reason is because it's just a singlet, it has to be bonded to this oxygen because the hydrogen here, next to the hydrogen is an O, which has nothing else on it. Because it has nothing else on it, it has this single splitting. The O kind of shields it from these other ones here. So if you have a OH group, your singlet there will be that OH group. Lastly, we've got um, these two hydrogens here come from this line here. We know that there has to be these two hydrogens because your integration is two, which means you have H2. And this splitting here splits into four lines. So therefore, we know that the, it's bonded to something with three hydrogens on it, which it is here. So these three hydrogens here are causing the splitting of this signal into four lines, which we can see here. So that is how we look at the splitting. Right. That's not too bad because it's an example that I've shown you. We're going to look at an example where we actually have to try and work out the structure based on a high res um, spectrum. All right, so as I said, the next one's going to be a bit harder, um, where we only have our spectrum and we only have a molecular formula. Our molecular formula is C4H8, and our spectrum looks like this, where we have two distinct high res peaks. Um, our two distinct high res peaks basically means that we have two areas where there's carbon. Our relative areas are, is 1 to 3. So this means we have an area of 1, hydrogen, to 3. Our total number of hydrogens in our compound is 8. So what we're going to say is there's going to be two hydrogens to 6, and that will make our total of 8 hydrogens that we need. So therefore, this peak here is going to be represented by two hydrogens feeling the same stuff, and six hydrogens here feeling the same stuff. So that's how that all works. The next thing we're going to look at is um, the chemical shifts, um, where and what might be causing a peak at this one and that one there. So I'll go to my table, I'm going to look at this, it's about 5.3ish, and find out what represents a 5.3 chemical shift. Hang on, it might be a bit higher than a 5.3. All right, and we go down here, we go to about 5.3, so it could be an OH group. It won't be because there's no O there, so we can't we rule that one out straight away. Move down and we see that between 4.5 and 6, we've got this double bond here, um, a double bond between two carbons and a hydrogen on the end of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to it and say, all right, this guy here, based on his chemical shift, he's going to have a, he's going to be a C, uh, I'll put it out there, he's going to be C double bonded to C, based on that chemical shift. The next chemical shift we got here is about a 1.5, give or take, um, and we're going to have a look at what he might be. Uh, 1.5 comes out at being, well, it could be this one, C one of the three hydrogens, that makes sense. All right, it's a bit too high for this one here, can't be the, this one. It's not an OH group because we have no O there. And that's about all we have. It could be this one here, which is very close to it as well. So a C bonded to um, carbon with three hydrogens with a double bond across a bit more. So we might just chuck... It's definitely going to be a methyl group, though, the CH3. That's for sure, because it's CH3 here, and it's, it could be a CH3 up there. So we're going to put that in there. So we're going to say that's a methyl group. Um, methyl group. CH3. All right, so that's what we've got given. Um, now we're going to look and see, right, there's six hydrogens here, so therefore it's probably going to be two methyl groups is causing this, which are going to be symmetrical around it, each other, because they have to be exactly the same, so it's going to be two methyl groups. So um, two methyl groups, 
means two times those groups there. Our carbon double bond here, we're going to put in. Now each one of these carbons must have a hydrogen attached to it, okay? Because that's what they said back here in our chemical shift um, table. Our there it is, CH double bonded to CH. So we'll put those two in there. And that will be a H there, that will be a H there, H there. Um, coming off this makes sense because we've only got two peaks here, it has to be symmetrical. So therefore, we have to have a CH3 here and a CH3 here. Now, what I could also do is look at this um, the splitting of this atom. Oh, sorry, not the splitting of the atom the splitting of the signal that we have here. This has been split into two. Okay, Because it's been split into two, that means the neighbouring hydrogen has to have one because of that N plus one rule. So because it's split into two, I'm going to adjust this and say it has to be bonded to a CH group. Okay, Now, because this has been split into four, that means that this um, H up here, down here, which is be H there, because it's been split into four, this must be attached to something with three hydrogens on it, like that. So what I'm going to do is quickly highlight um, in green. We've got the splitting here, which tells us about the neighbouring hydrogen. Okay, the blue is going to say that our chemical shift tells us about this hydrogen here. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for. I don't want to clear all atoms. I want to do the same highlighting. The splitting, which I'll highlight in green, tells us about the neighbouring hydrogen, and our chemical shift down the bottom here tells us about this hydrogen that we have here what type of group it is. Um, and what we do, just the last final thing, is we check and make sure that's alright. So what we've got is sy symmetry around this double bond here. So double bond of symmetry there. So that we're going to have two major hydrogen groups, one here and one here. This hydrogen group has attached to the double bond, so it should be this chemical shift. And the neighbouring hydrogens are three, so it should be split into four, which it is. This hydrogen all right, is part of a methyl group, so it should be between 1 and 2, which it is. And the neighbouring hydrogen okay, is one hydrogen on the neighbouring part, so therefore it should be split into two, and that makes sense. Because all it all fits up, we're pretty darn certain that this is our compound, which will be um, butene or 2-butene, however you want to write it. Um, and that is formulating that. Any questions, give us a yell. I'll try and put together another um, test, not a test, another question as well. All right, here's another one. Um, and we'll just try and show you what, all the information that we can get out of this um, spectrum. Basically, what they would want to find out is what is giving these peaks and where these peaks are coming from and which hydrogen area these peaks are going to come from. A few ways we can do this. First of all, we look at um, when we see that there's three hydrogen areas here, and that makes sense. There's three hydrogen areas in our compound. That's fine. We look at our integration things. So what this tells us is how many hydrogens are in each um, each part. So we've got two hydrogens here, three hydrogens here, and three hydrogens here. Looking at our... Um, actually, what I might do is I might do them in different colours so you can really see the difference. Um, so two hydrogens here, three hydrogens there, and three hydrogens there. Okay, the two hydrogen clearly has to come from these two hydrogens here because this group is the only group that has our two hydrogens in the environment. Um, 
These two here both have three hydrogens attached to it, so it could be either of these two here. Our chemical shift, which is about 4.1-ish, um, I don't know, give or take, we'll have a look at our 4.1 chemical shift and see if it makes sense. 4.1 comes in between here, okay, and it tells you we've got a CH2 or a CH3 single bonded to an oxygen. We go back to our um, thing and see, yes, we've got a CH2 single bonded to an oxygen and that fits with this peak there. So our peak here, okay, that fits with our carb hydrogen in that area. I might zoom in on this so you can see it better. So there you go. That might be a bit better for you. All right, so next up is this peak here. Um, what this peak represents is three um, hydrogens, and so does this one. The next thing we could look at is the chemical shift. They're both fairly similar in chemical shift there. So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the splitting because that's something that's completely different here. This guy has been split, hasn't been split at all. He's just single one. He's got a one signal on him. That means his neighbouring atom has got no car, no hydrogens on it at all. If it had hydrogen on the neighbouring um, atom, he will be split. His signal will be split. We look at our um, compound here, and we see that this these hydrogens here on the neighbouring hydrogen here. Oh, so not the neighbouring hydrogen, the neighbouring atom. He has not got any hydrogens on him at all. Because of this, we would only expect one signal to come out of that. From that, we can say that yes, this, these hydrogens must have made that peak there because we have no splitting due to no hydrogens being on the neighbouring atom. We go back and look at the chemical shift and just have a look at that, just to double check um, what it is. It's around about two-ish or so, and what the two, here, 2 to 2.9, says it's going to be a methyl group or a um, CH2 group, which is bonded to a carbon with the double bond to oxygen up there. We come back. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because that's what it is. So this, from the chemical shift and from that splitting, we can definitely tell that, that those hydrogens made that peak. Moving on to our fuchsia one. Um, last of all, we got this peak. Straight away we look at splitting, it's split into three signals. One, two, three. That tells us on the neighbouring atom we're going to have two carbon, sorry, the neighbouring atom is going to have two hydrogens. We've only got one hydrogen thing left, so it must be this one. Let's just double check that makes sense. On our neighbouring atom, we've got two hydrogens there. All right, That means this, this signal should have been split into three, which it has been, so therefore that confirms that. Brilliant. The chemical shift is just above one, so we go back into here. Just above one, so there's just a single methyl group, or it's a CH2 group, and what have we got? Yes, it is a single methyl group, and that makes more sense. All right, so by looking at all the data, we can make sure we've got the right thing, and we can check it. Hopefully that explains a bit about how we look at and interpret spectra and put piece things together. The main thing is writing down all your information, putting down all the possibilities it could be, and then piecing it together to make sure it all makes sense. Lastly, double checking what you've written down or the structure that you have fits with the peak data. All right. Hopefully um, that clears a few things up, and if you have any questions, give us a yell.